Hi, my name is Nick Kovacic and I'm with the Dixon Company and I hope you're not lactose intolerant because today we're at the Michigan State Dairy Processing Plant and we're going to show you how raw milk turns into both cheese and ice cream. The process starts here with the delivery of raw cream or milk on a tanker truck uh, to the back of the facility. They connect it with a hose where they pump the, the milk or cream out into the facility itself. These trucks are um, washed out after every delivery with a high pressure temperature um, controlled and monitored water making sure that it's clean and safe for its next delivery. During the washdown process, um, many of the facilities here use a CIP system. As you can see, they have a chart recorder connected to their CIP system to record the temperature while they're washing it down. The facility is actually uh, thinking about moving away from a chart recorder to a more digital uh, temperature and humidity uh, chart recorder like this one, uh, where they can mount it to the side of the uh, CIP system right here. This will give them their temperature and humidity information graphed out digitally and then they can download it to their computer using either a flash card or a USB cable um, so they can have that information readily available on their computer. The raw milk or cream is pumped off of the tanker um, and into these storage tanks via this tube here. It sits in these storage tanks um, before it's turned into the cheese or the ice cream. And while it sits here, it can be monitored for uh, the temperature by Dixon's HT200 data logger. So it is stainless steel, can be placed directly into the product itself, and it will monitor the temperature during the storage conditions. One of the options of the, for the milk after it's in the storage tanks is to be pumped into this pasteurizer where it's used um, at the beginning process of the cheese making. At this point in time, it's very temperature sensitive since it's still in a raw form. And one of the products that you can use is the Dixon SM320 data logger with a K thermocouple for temperature monitoring. They take the end of the K thermocouple and put it into the tank and record the temperature conditions while it is pasteurized. After the raw milk is pasteurized, it's pumped through a series of tubes and into this heat exchanger where it's heated up to 163 degrees for at least 20 seconds. That process can be monitored by using a K thermocouple. Here we have a unit that's attached to the K thermocouple, the Dixon SM320, which will, can record the temperature during that period of time. The other option here at the dairy processing plant is making ice cream. The cream itself is mixed with water in these, bi these big tanks and they're combined with sugar and other ingredients that come from this mixer. At this period in time, the temperature of the cream and sugar mixture is very temperature sensitive and they can use our HT200 temperature data logger, again because it's stainless steel they can put it directly into the unit itself and monitor the temperature during the entire period that it's mixed. Some dairy facilities like to use an infrared gun to get a better idea of the general temperature of their pipes. This way they can react if there's a problem or they're sensing a problem before it becomes a big issue. One way to do that is with an infrared gun where you can point, shoot, click and get a quick temperature reading of your pipes. Dairy facilities like to monitor the temperature and humidity of their raw product ingredient room. One way they can accomplish this is with a, a touchscreen uh, data logger from Dixon. You can mount it on the outside uh, of the wall here and every time you come in and out of the room you can get a reading of both the temperature and humidity. This information can also be downloaded uh, to your computer where you can easily store and retrieve that information at any time. The next stage is where the raw, uh, the raw materials from the previous room are pumped into a bath. Here, the materials are mixed together and the product itself starts to form cheese. You can record uh, the temperature at this stage by using an SM320 temperature data logger. We have a K thermocouple run into the bath right now. These K thermocouples come in a variety of different um, options, all with stainless steel ends and probes that you can put directly into the material recording the temperature uh, during this process. After the cheese is done in the vat, it's vacuum packaged and then placed in these coolers for aging purposes. The coolers themselves are monitored uh, three different ways and we're showing here a temperature chart recorder. 
The temperature chart recorder uh, records temperature directly onto the paper chart. They then save these charts uh, for USDA inspectors to prove that the temperatures are at a good condition while the cheese is in the, the cooler. Above that is a temperature data logger, which shows you your current temperatures, but also records that information, and you can be stored on your computer to prove the temperature over time. Next, we have a touchscreen temperature data logger, which not only shows you the current readings, but also shows you a graph of the temperature over time. It can be downloaded to your computer as well and saved for archival purposes. All three units use our K thermocouple technology, which is stand with a standard fitting and a bead wire at the end. The bead wire is the probe itself, so that's exactly what you would want to put in the, in the cooler. These come in various different sizes. You can get them from 10 feet to 100 feet. So if you wanted to do the very back of the cooler, you could run a probe all the way to the back. Or if you wanted to do the very front, you could do that as well. The final stage of the cheese aging pro process happens here in the cooler itself, where the cheese sets for a specific amount of time until it's ready to be shipped out to the stores that use the cheese themselves. The coolers can be monitored using an SP125 temperature uh, data logger. This logger is very easy. You can put it with the boxes themselves. You can leave it there. It will record the temperature and when you're ready you can take it back to your computer, plug it in with a, a USB cable and you have all your information right on the screen itself. Another thing that can be monitored is the actual cheese bricks. If you wanted to record the temperature of the cheese itself during its storage and aging process, you can use an HT225 data logger. You can insert the probe into the side of the cheese and get a true reading of what the brick is during its storage conditions. The next stage in the ice cream making process starts here with our mixing station where we add in flavorings and colorings to get the uh, product to the right consistency and uh, taste. It's then pumped over into this station where it's cooled down um, and brought to the correct temperature. It pumps out of this machine in a consistency of almost a soft serve ice cream and into a container. Next, it moves into the mixing station where they add in uh, ingredients such as strawberries or cake batter or cookie dough. During this entire time, you can monitor the facility by um, using a TH300. This will give you a, uh, just a, an, a general um, reading of what the temperature and humidity are in your facility. The final stage of the ice cream process happens here in the cooler itself where it is freezing negative 20 degrees. Just like the cheese coolers, we can use the SP125 in here to get an idea of what the temperature was while the ice cream is, is stored in here. To give you an idea how important it is to monitor your temperature, the value of the ice cream in here is roughly about thirty dollars to $35,000 at any given time. If we're not recording our temperatures and we lose this product, it's very, very important that we do it. The cheese cooler itself, on any given time, can hold almost $100,000 worth of product. So a simple device like an SP125 temperature monitor can save you thousands of dollars. So that was a quick tour of the dairy processing plant here at Michigan State University. One of the products that we didn't feature is our wireless temperature monitoring system. Pretty much all the points that we talked about can we replace with this system. It, it's a transmitter that talks via radio frequency. All your information downloads to one computer where you can archive it, retrieve it, and print it. The nice thing about this system is you can also have email and text alerts. So if you wanted to have an alarm condition, uh, you can get, a, can get alert through there. The last stage of the dairy production process is delivery. And as you can see here, we have a, a refrigerated truck. And one of the products that you can use to monitor uh, your delivery is an RL temperature report logger. This unit you can put right in the delivery. When it gets to where you're going, you can unplug it, put it right in the USB compartment, download it directly to your computer, and produce a report that shows you what your temperatures of your cheeses and your ice creams were during delivery themselves. Thanks for watching our video today on uh, the dairy process plant here at Michigan State. If you have any questions on Dixon products, you can go to our website at www.dixondata.com or you can give us a call at 1-800-757-3747. Thank you.